to start? Uh, okay, my name is Shaina E. I'm from uh, the Cloudify team, and what we do at Cloudify is orchestration, actually Tosca orchestration. And I'm going to talk how to manage multiple Kubernetes clusters about LM. So I use how to uh, how the L or how to LM do I package Kubernetes uh, cross cloud. So all of us uh, know that uh, we have uh, hybrid cloud, so we can have some workloads on AWS, some workloads on on-prem, it could be OpenStack, it could be Kubernetes, it could be bare metal, whatever, and we can have some Kubernetes clusters uh, uh, everywhere. So in this uh, presentation, actually I will focus on Kubernetes, but first, why do we need uh, multiple clouds, multiple clusters? One reason is because we have different functionality. Each cluster actually uh, runs different things. One could run the database cluster, one could run the CRM application, for example, etc. What we see more and more in the market is that uh, you take, for example, ONAP, uh, and you want to distribute it on multiple clusters. And the reasons are uh, few folds. One is redundancy, so if one fails, you want to have high availability. Second one is load balancing and performance. Uh, so you can actually uh, uh, provision some components here and some components here and load balance them and get better performance. And of course, proximity. Think about Asian users and European users. Each one wants to go as fast as possible to his closest data center. So you can, if you are a, uh, an application shop, you can distribute your application everywhere and each user will get to each data center the fastest way. Uh, so uh, if we look at uh, Kubernetes as... Uh, uh, the infrastructure, uh, we at Cloudify uh, actually uh, um, develop a TOSCA. TOSCA stands for Topology and Orchestration uh, for Cloud Applications. And uh, it's a, a standard, a OASIS standard, and we actually created uh, in TOSCA an abstraction layer that can go and actually provision workloads on each one of uh, the Kubernetes clusters. So uh, just a few words about TOSCA. In Tosca, you have, that's in a nutshell, Tosca, you can have actually a node. A node could be a VM, it could be an application that runs inside a VM, and you have a relationship. One relationship is that one a component is contained in another component, and another relationship is one component is connected to another component, and on this connection, we can run lifecycle operations and take, for example, the runtime attributes, MongoDB port, and connect it to the application in real time. So think about it as a huge graph that uh, can actually connect many different nodes. Now, workloads could be span across different clusters. In this case, uh, we have developed uh, something that we call a composite service. Uh, this microservice can run on one cluster, this one can run on another cluster, and it has its own lifecycle operations. And we have a master blueprint that knows to combine everything together. Everything could be manipulated in real time. It's a graph, so the orchestrator can uh, change or delete or add properties in real time. And uh, for example, I can add a VNF to a service chain, or I can uh, chain uh, some components from one Kubernetes to another Kubernetes. So if we look at the bigger picture now, so Cloudify can orchestrate multiple workloads on different Kubernetes clusters. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, so this is the Tosca blueprint. So we have a master blueprint. Uh, you see the Tosca graph in each one uh, of the local Kubernetes clusters. And we can use actually to, uh, you know, the Kubernetes APIs to provision all the resources. It could be pods, services, replica sets, etc. cetera. Uh, to make things uh, much easier, we actually use LM charts. So you can uh, actually encapsulate your uh, workloads in LM charts, and we can go and provision them uh, to each one of the clusters. I will show an ONAP example where we have an ONAP uh, workload, and uh, actually we connect to the Tiller server of each one of the cluster and provision workloads on that cluster. So. Uh, here, actually, the Tosca master blueprint knows to talk uh, to the, each one of the different uh, Kubernetes uh, clusters and provision uh, the, another blueprint. This is also a separate blueprint. Uh, and use this blueprint to provision the workloads on that cluster. Uh, how we do this? Uh, uh, so we have a, a Tosca infrastructure provider that knows to uh, start a Kubernetes cluster. And uh, if we focus on LM, we can have an LM blueprint 
so each one of the nodes is from ONAP uh, microservice Kubernetes, and we have an LM uh, plugin integration that knows to talk to the Tiller server here and uh, provision the workload on that cluster. So you just need to point to that cluster and provision the workload on that cluster. And that's uh, we did for ONAP, but uh, it's something that's generically available. So uh, in this example, uh, you can see that we have multiple ONAP clusters. And uh, we actually uh, can go uh, now to very quickly to the blueprint and I can show you this uh, in the blueprint itself. So this is a blueprint that provision a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, basically this is the Tosta language. I'm not going to get into it. It has different sections but you can see that uh, in one of the sections we have uh, a Kubernetes master and we have the workers here. So you can define it dynamically. The blueprint that uh, actually installs on top of it is the ONAP uh, that we use here. And uh, you can see that in this blueprint, uh, sorry, one second. You can see that I point to the Tiller server. Uh, here you see the Tiller server and I provision where components on one Tiller server. I can do it uh, to, for many Tiller servers. And you can see the different applications here. ANI and APPC and CLAMP, etc. To uh, run fast forward, uh, let me show you a, a video that we actually provision uh, this cluster. Uh, so you can see that we have uh, multiple edges and we have uh, actually the Kuba on up, and this is the master on up uh, cluster, and uh, it works with multiple clusters. So we can see here uh, the different components of the Kubernetes cluster so the Kubernetes host, and uh, the Kubernetes workers, and uh, Grafana, and Prometheus, and all the components that are needed for a cluster to run. And uh, And here we can see actually all the ONAP workloads uh, that uh, are defined on top of this Kubernetes. So you can see the different applications that I mentioned before, the ANI, the portal, the APPC, etc. cetera. Uh, now, uh, just a few words, uh, how we integrate with Kubernetes. Uh, in Cloudify, uh, it's not just we can provision workloads on top of Kubernetes. We actually look at Kubernetes as a sandwich. Uh, if Kubernetes wants to scale out, it actually calls the provider interface. So we, we implemented the provider interface to add additional nodes into Kubernetes. So Kubernetes uh, called the provider interface and give me another VM, we give another VM to Kubernetes. And uh, the, this provider that we implemented actually can go and allocate VMs from multiple clouds. So you can allocate from Amazon, you can allocate on-prem, from uh, OpenStack, etc. So this is one integration point. Another integration point is that we implement the service broker. The service broker actually allows you uh, to access external services like a database uh, on a VM as they are internal uh, cloud native Kubernetes services. So Kubernetes think we have a catalog of services, so Kubernetes thinks that it's a, a, an internal service, but uh, this service broker uh, proxy actually knows to connect it to external service. So you can have uh, actually a mixture of workloads uh, on different clouds. And think now about uh, all the use cases that we mentioned here about edges. So you can have Kubernetes bare metal on an edge, you can have a master Kubernetes uh, you know, uh, on your on-prem cloud or on a public cloud. So you can like that provision workloads and manage them, manage the lifecycle operations uh, using Cloudify on uh, multiple clusters. Um, and uh, one more thing uh, is uh, actually uh, this whole process is uh, based on Tosca and we would like to make Tosca uh, like Lego blocks. So uh, we actually, as I mentioned before, we have the Tosca master blueprint and we have the different blueprints. So you can actually, uh, um, let's say, uh, micro or uh, mod logically, you can actually create a blueprint 
a small blueprint for each VNF, uh, for example, for each microservice, and uh, connect them uh, using this master blueprint concept. Uh, and uh, it's very flexible like this. You can, for example, uh, we came to an environment and we defined function as a service, as I showed in a previous presentation, uh, orchestrated like that, even though uh, we didn't know about uh, how to do it from the beginning. So it's very modular and it is built for the unexpected future scenario. Uh, this kind of pattern. So we like very much this pattern. Uh, any questions? Okay, thank you.